my throat dried out as I was talking, so I had to break the thing. Um, so we, so what makes you feel interested in someone or turns you on or something, that actually mattered in those cases. It was important that men be able to provide for their wives and children and raise their kids. And it was important in those days that people actually fit into their rules and actually experience their lives that way, which I didn't do as, you know, having announced, having sort of half come out as gay in 1961, saying I was latent. And and then in, when I was in NIH there, um, all the fan getting me to talk about the fantasies and therapy and individual therapy, that was a big deal. I don't remember exactly when I coughed it up, so to speak, um, but what it really was about was, you know, being able to situate myself so that I would be doing what others expected or demanded of me for the welfare, not myself, but of the family as a whole and of the community as a whole and the people around me, even as it was then, and this was, you know, we still had segregation then and we had not had the civil rights movement yet. We didn't, hadn't had Stonewall yet or any of these things. I was expected to change in another, to change myself so that I fit into these needs so that when something happens, you know, I as a male, as a man, could protect other women and children and even would could give my life or allow myself to be maimed with some sense of honor if the occasion called for it. I mean, that we had to live with that kind of idea in those days. We've had a lot more stability in maybe the last six or seven decades than maybe we would have expected. We've had some threats, but this is the most serious. We had 9-11, of course, but, and, and the AIDS epidemic in the 80s was existential in a way, too, in the way it threatened the gay community. Very different mechanism than this, but there's some similarity in the fact that it produced a moral crisis then, which I lived through when I was living in Dallas. So the important thing was that it was that um, what whoever I was that I could fit in and do my part if something happened without just losing my entire sense of being and reason for living or something. So that was a big deal then. Um, I, I We didn't have individualism. We didn't have the, the libertarian idea, this narrow idea of personal responsibility. You were responsible for how your behavior, how you might accidentally expose others in your family or community to risks that, that were hard to, hard to see in advance. And that's the case with this virus. We're being reminded of the fact that sometimes that's how life, life is.